So let's go the opposite way. We've talked about going up. Let's talk about going down. So in the past, you've mentioned formation burrows and then escape burrows. Uh, what are they and how do they differentiate? So we um, started seeing animals run into burrows. Um, and as I said, they were reluctant to go in the burrows if you could see them. And then if they went in and then we realized and most of them that they run into, um, you know, they all seem to be this kind of like an entrance hole and then like a bell shaped area. Well, not a bell. It's kind of like a elliptical area. And then they'd run in and then they'd wedge themselves up against the edge of it as an escape. So obviously, you know, they're quite rough as well. And they kind of wedge themselves in there and can't get out. And, um, you know, it's quite open. They have, lots of room to turn around in and everything like that. And then we have uh, the brumation burrows. And we've uncovered a few ones that have been brumating. And they're always... So we uncovered one that was in a sand bank on the edge of the road. And he was coming out. And we looked down it. And it was tight. You know, he would have to really squeeze in there nice and tight to use that. And then we had another dragon, which was, um, there was this log lying in the sand and it was right up the end of it, quite deep underneath. And, um, it was quite tight, actually. Um, we just found it because we flipped the log and it was quite a long log. Um, and where they brewmate, it tends to be quite a bit deeper than these escape burrows. These escape burrows, they pretty much only use during the active season. Um, they will sleep in them only for a short period in the spring and late autumn when the nighttime temperatures get really cold um, still and the daytime temperatures are getting really warm. Um, but once, once you get to the end of spring, the nighttime temperatures have risen to, you know, above 15 degrees and they'll sleep out in the open because they do not like being in um, cornered in a burrow obviously the predators out there um, uh, because they have blind ended tunnels um, the predators out there you've got you know numerous species of snake which prey on them and are active at night so they want to spend as little time in an escape burrow as they need to because they're cornered, um, but the brumation burrows uh, are very tight, um, well insulated, um, but also you get ones that are, so if a bearded dragon, it either chooses a really deep, like the deep one in the sand bank was about more than 30 centimetres deep in that sand bank, um, and you know from other studies on uh, burrowing mammals that burrow in the same area, um, and have similar length and depth burrows. Um, during the winter, it stays at about 15 degrees Celsius the whole of winter. There is very little fluctuation there. Whereas the bearded dragons, there are some bearded dragons that will choose a more shallow burrowing site and it will fluctuate between being like less than 10 degrees at night and then getting the sun of the day, even though it's 21 degrees or 18 degrees outside it still gets up to about 17 degrees underneath there. And those ones will actually come out during the um, warmer days in winter. We do have most of the time where they're found, it can be anywhere between 12 and 21 usually during the winter. But then um, some of those days, sometimes you get a hot spell in the middle of winter and it's 23 to 25 degrees, 27 degrees, and they'll actually come out the bars and then go back into that uh, shallower brumation burrow under a log or something like that. The clip you've just watched is just a snippet of a larger podcast episode where we had Bidivet on the podcast. If you want to find the full podcast episode, you can find that up here. Or if you want to carry on looking through the Bidivet Explained series, you can find the rest of it down here.